Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this GitOpsCon presentation. Uh, my name is Adarsh Vincent Chitlapilli. Uh, I work as a cloud software engineer at Intel. So I've been working with Intel uh, for the past one year and I've been engaged most of with GitOps related work. Uh, we are doing cool edge stuff and I'm glad to be part of it. Thanks Adarsh. I definitely agree with you when it comes to cool edge stuff. Um, anyways, I'm Igor DC, software engineer at Intel, been doing on and off work around Edge and Cloud, currently a um, developer and maintainer of Emco, and um, me and others will be here talking a little bit about GitOps and a little bit about, about Emco, uh, but fundamentally Emco with GitOps, uh, and that, at the end we'll have a demo as well, so I hope you enjoy. For the last couple of years, we at Intel have been working uh, on Emco. Uh, as a solution for edge deployments and for the last couple of months uh, we have been looking at GitOps and integrating it to MCO and we have realized like how powerful MCO and GitOps is uh, to solve this problem of edge deployment and that's what we are going to talk about uh, today. So just as a recap uh, before we uh, jump into our problem statement uh, we would like to just recap what GitOps is. This is a basic GitOps flow. Uh, we have the developer on the left hand side. So developer puts in the source code, which is like resource YAMLs, etc. And through some CI, it goes to the Kratos resource uh, Git repo. And on the cluster, we have like few config agents like Flux or Argo, which continuously monitors this Git repo for resources or any changes. So as soon as it finds any resources or it sees any changes in the resources it will it will pull it up and deploy it to the cluster so this is a basic gist of what GitOps is now let us see like what technically it is defined as so technically it is defined as a set of practices to manage infrastructure and application configurations using git so git is like the important point here but git is a single source of truth so the entire state of the system is is monitored and tracked in Git itself. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have like an agents like Flux CD or Argo CD, which are deployed in the cluster to continuously monitor this repo and which does the job of doing the uh, deployment of applications. So we can say like what you see is what you get, pun intended. Let's understand the problem stated. Uh, in a real world scenario uh, for an edge deployment uh, there would be like n number of clusters for example let us consider cluster number one so let's assume this cluster is deployed in azure for instance so this cluster can have like app one app two and so on like five apps in the same way we can have another cluster for example cluster two and let us assume that this is deployed in aws and it has three apps, app two, app four, app three. Similarly, we have cluster three. This can be an on-premise cluster and it can have like four apps on it. And so on, we can have, have like n number of clusters with n unique different apps. So we can see from this illustration itself, like how complex it can become. A multi-cluster, multi-app deployment can, can go out of hands pretty quickly. So such a sort of a scenario uh, brings in so some complexities with it as well. Uh, so one such complexity is management. So just as we saw, like such a huge deployment with a lot of apps requires an orchestrator in place, which can manage the deployment of these applications in a smooth manner. And also we require something which could monitor the status of these applications. Like did the deployment go fine? Uh, are the applications working properly? Is the health good of those applications and also in certain scenarios certain applications would require certain sort of resources like spe specific hardware so we also have to ensure that those apps get deployed to those type of clusters the other complexity that we could encounter is security uh, so we need like a secure way uh, for this deployment to go through the api calls that we make uh, should be secure and also 
any sort of credentials or any sensitive data that we might require for these deployments to go through should also be maintained in a secure way. The third com complexity that may encounter is consistency. So as I mentioned here, consistency is a key. For any deployment, we must have this assurity that what we desire is what we get. And even if there's a drift that happens in the system, like the, the versions are old, uh, the entire configuration should be able to remediate this issue and ensure that consistency is always maintained. To address the edge deployment complexities that were just outlined, I would like to introduce you to AMCO, or the Edge Multi-Cluster Orchestrator. This is the Linux Foundation Networking Project, currently in its sandbox stage. And some of the things we can do with it are, for example, intent-based deployment of cloud-native applications. So MCO is designed to have an intent-based API and to be pluggable to fulfill those intents. Uh, its main focus is cloud-native applications on the edge. Um, it can deploy to, set of, to sets of Kubernetes clusters, does a multi-cluster nature of it, but those Kubernetes clusters can be reached in different ways through different implementations of backends, namely the typical cube uh, config based approach with direct API authentication, as well as GitOps based approaches. Um, flexibility, modularity, and the scalability of MCO are major selling points of it. And specifically when it comes to the modularity, we can attach different backends, like I just said, uh, regarding how to reach those Kubernetes clusters, namely GitOps for particular implementations out there, both um, you know the known names from the public cloud industry, uh, as well as lesser known um, implementations of such. Through Amco, we can we ha we get access to a single pane of view for all the clusters we have, as well as the applications there in deployed. Um, so such applications are what we call composite applications. They really are collections of applications that get deployed as a single package with logic uh, to, 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 to represent how to distribute that composed application, those components of the uh, application across the multiple clusters. And AMCO provides that engine and the language to achieve that distribution of, of such composite applications. So now let us understand a basic uh, MCO flow uh, with GitOps. So this flow is basically to deploy resources to three clusters. So as shown in the diagram, we have three clusters, cluster one, cluster two, and cluster three. So cluster one is like a direct cluster. It has no GitOps component in it. Uh, cluster two and cluster three are GitOps managed. So in this cluster two, uh, uses Flux CD as a config agent and Cluster 3 is like a Azure Arc managed cluster. So basically we, we would onboard this cluster to Azure Arc and thus it's a Azure managed cluster. Uh, we have a Git server here. So this Git server can be any Git server. It can be like a local Git server. It can be GitHub, GitLab and etc. Then we have MCO here. So we can deploy MCO to any of this. It can be co-located with any of these clusters or we can deploy MCO to a different cluster also. Uh, so we have shown like three important components of MCO. There are more components than this, but cluster registrar, orchestrator, resource synchronizer, and MongoDB. These are like few important components of MCO. Now let us assume, uh, let us look at a scenario. Uh, we have user and the user want to deploy an app to these clusters. So the first step that you would take is basically registering these clusters with MCO. Uh, so for cluster one, since it's a direct cluster, it will be the cube config will be the registration key. So the user will provide that. And for cluster two and cluster three, since they are GitOps based cluster, the interaction would go through Git server. So we require some Git credentials. And in term, in, in case of uh, cluster three, uh, we also require a few Azure credentials. So all these credentials and cube config is provided by user one, the user to the cluster registrar. And this then gets stored in the MongoDB. In the step two, uh, the user calls instantiate. 
so basically wants to instantiate app one on this cluster so he calls that api command to orchestrator and orchestrator then gives this command to resourcing so resource synchronizer does the job of basically applying the resources and in case of GitOps, writing the resource files to Git server. So that's what will happen the next step. So resourcing gets the credentials from the MongoDB. In case of the direct cluster, it directly applies the resources. And in case of uh, the GitOps cluster, cluster two and cluster three, it writes the resources uh, to the Git server. Uh, in for for cluster three, which is like an Azure cluster, uh, an Azure config should also be created. And that's what we see here. It calls that Azure API to create that config. Now the next step is step five. So in step five, for cluster three, which is a Azure managed cluster, uh, it will configure the, uh, the the Flux CD on that cluster. And then after the Flux CD is uh, configured, it will start pulling resources from the Git server uh, and sync the resources. Uh, and thus, like after all these five steps, all the all these three clusters have app one uh, deployed and installed on them. In terms of GitOps backend support by Amco, we currently offer three upstream. We have Base, Basic, Flux V2, which allows us to use GitOps with any kind of Kubernetes cluster, as long as we run that Flux V2 controller and operator inside. We have Azure Arc, which happens to internally also use Flux V2, but this Azure Arc, a GitOps extension for Amco is Flux V2 plus the additional extensions to, to extract the maximum functionality from, from Azure. And then we also have Antos, um, so we can run GitOps for, you know, for Google Cloud. Uh, this is this uses Antos config management, including repo sync. Repo sync is a structure that in Antos, we can use to scope deployments to particular namespaces and also to apply role-based access control there using um, the, the repo sync's respective service account in Kubernetes. So these are the three ones we have. Flux V2, just a generic Flux. Azure Arc, which is also based on Flux, but for Azure with additional extensions and in Antos config management. So Git server is like one of the important components of the GitOps flow. Uh, usually, we depend on uh, local, uh, so Git servers like GitHub, GitLab, etc. But it's also desired to have like a local Git server, and Mco comes bundled with a local Git server. Uh, the, this Git server is is powered by Gitty, um, and the UI is very similar to what we see for GitHub. We can see here, it's very similar to what uh, GitHub provides. And one of the best USPs of having a own Git server is that. You, the user will have full control over the data and this ensures that there is no privacy leaks or anything like that. And also another issue that can happen with uh, Git servers like GitHub is API rate limiting. Uh, so you also won't face this issue if you have your own Git server. So, so Mco with GitOps. We can think of Git as a source of truth for these clusters that are synchronizing with, with the Git repos. And then we can also think of Amco as the entity defining that truth to be put into the Git repos. GitOps is a great addition to Amco because it really aligns very well when it comes to making the most out of Amco's existing functionality, such as you know, on-demand instantiation of applications, intelligent placement of workloads on clusters, including clusters of different natures from different uh, interfaces including GitOps, uh, the customization of resources post instantiation of the application. That's something Emco can do. So we deploy the application and it can customize it later. And GitOps also attaches very well in that point. And then uh, finally, automation of service mesh and other connectivity, and, you know, networking and the security infrastructure, the uh, automated distribution of security certificates and things of such, Emco and GitOps go along very well together. So just to recap the complexities we discussed earlier, uh, we are doing a recap here. So there's three complexities that would face an energy deployment or management. 
security and consistency. Now let us see how MCO plus GitOps can solve the complexities that we discussed earlier. The first complexity that we mentioned was management. Now using GitOps helps to deploy these resources very easily. So deployment is taken care of by GitOps. Now what MCO adds on to this is intelligent placement of resources. So considering the scenario where a certain application requires a certain amount of CPU or RAM, so it should be placed in such a cluster which have enough resources to handle that app's needs. So that is taken care of by MCO. Also what MCO provides is like a one-stop solution for monitoring. So to find out if the apps are healthy in the cluster, uh, if they were deployed properly, if they're updated properly, all of this is taken care of by MCO. What also MCO does is application dependency management between clusters. So consider an example uh, where we have app one, which is deployed on cluster one, but then there's app two, which depends on this uh, app one. So it can only be deployed after app one is deployed. So all of this is taken care of by MCO. So we can mark this problem as solved. The second complexity that we discussed was security. Now MCO seamlessly integrates with Istio and Service Mesh. So due to this, uh, authentication of users becomes very easy and we can do that in a very secure manner. Also by using Istio, all the API calls between the MCO services are secured. Also the calls from MCO the Git server uses HTTPS protocol which also means it's secured. So this ensures that no one can sniff to the API calls and get data from it. Now the flux config agents that we discussed, they are all deployed in the clusters. So this helps us to avoid the risk of storing credentials anywhere other than the clusters. So we don't need to store the credentials in the Git repo anywhere else. Everything is confined in the clusters. So we can also say like we have solved this complexity of security. The third complexity that we are bugged with was consistency. Now what MCO provides or guarantees is consistent intents. And what GitOps guarantees is consistent rendering. The combination of both this ensures that what we desire is what we get. And that too in a consistent manner. MCO also has a very unique directory structure which ensures that the apps are properly deployed to the right cluster every time. So we can also consider this, consist this complexity problem solved. Just recapping our initial problem statement. So we have like n clusters with n different types of app. So, so with all the discussion that we made so far, we recognize that MCO plus GitHub is a perfect solution and by having them as a center, center of this deployment, we can easily simplify the deployments of these applications on any complex cluster. Hello everyone. Uh, so we'll bring a small demo to showcase how MCO with GitOps can be used to uh, apply uh, applications to the clusters. Uh, so on right-hand side, we have three clusters in total and on right hand side, we have the cluster which has MCO installed in it. And then we have the two target clusters. Uh, so we'll first start by uh, installing Flux in the target cluster. So we'll make use of the bootstrap mechanism to install uh, Flux. Uh, important thing to note here is the path. Um, so we are considering this as cluster two. Uh, so this is the actual path where the resources will be uh, synced. We will just apply this uh, command. So it's connecting to GitHub. It will write the resources to GitHub and then uh, it also try use that to sync the flux components to the same cluster. Okay, so now it's done. Uh, the second step is to uh, install monitor. So what monitor does is basically it will monitor the resources in this cluster and uh, will report it to the Git repository and the service running in MCO. Uh, will monitor uh, the status from the Git repository and note it down. 
so we'll make use of the helm install command uh, to uh, install monitor and there are a few parameters to it uh, but the important one is a cluster name which again is uh, the same one as when discussed above it should be the one with cluster 2 in it so we can see the monitor is now deployed we can just quickly check uh, they are all deployed properly yep. you can see M uh, monitors deployed in under an mco namespace uh, and the flux system uh, components are, are deployed in the flux system namespace uh, similarly for the other target cluster we'll do the same steps uh, install flux install monitor i've already done it uh, to save time okay so now moving on uh, so mco comes bundled with this uh, test examples uh, so one just test example is the test flux uh, example uh, so this has few files in it uh, yaml files and uh, a setup script so this setup script uh, is where we specify uh, which apps to deploy to which all clusters uh, so we can see here uh, so we have two clusters and we are saying for uh, color D is deployed in cluster 1 and cluster 2 and operator in cluster 1. It also comes handy with a test all in one script. So we'll be using that to uh, apply the resources. We'll call apply to it and this will uh, instantiate the logical cloud as well as uh, the deployment. So the deployment is in progress. Okay, so deployment succeeded. Uh, so we can just quickly see uh, what all steps were taken. Uh, so the logical cloud is the first step uh, that gets instantiated. So it got succeeded, and the second step is basically the deployment uh, that also got succeeded. Now let us uh, check the Git repository. So in Git repository, uh, we have the two folders, uh, Flux cluster 1 and Flux cluster 2. And in that, these are the files for Flux. And this is cluster 1. Uh, so under this context ID, context, context ID path, we have apps folder, which has the two applications that we wanted deployed. Uh, so collect D has all collect D files and similarly operator and have all operator files. And uh, similarly, we have cluster 2 as well. If you go to cluster 2, cluster 2 only at collect D. So, similar to the cluster 1 case, we have all the files in Git here. Now, quickly check the uh, clusters. Did they get deployed? Yeah. So, this is cluster 1, it has operator and collect D. So, operator also has few TCD ports with it. So, everything got deployed here and similarly for the other cluster it only had uh, collect d in it uh, we are only had wanted collect d in cluster 2 and that's the only thing that got deployed here we quickly see how status gets tracked so uh, it's a different branch for each cluster so in cluster 1 we go to cluster folder we will see the status so, so status for both collect d and operator and similarly in the branch called cluster 2 the status for the cluster 2 is maintained now let's call uh, delete on these resources so again using a script we we'll call him delete Okay, yeah. so deletion went through as expected. We can see logical cloud termination succeeded, deployment termination succeeded. Okay. Okay, so let's again go to the uh, folder. Okay, so clusters. Okay, so we can see. Okay, so operator just got deleted in front of our eyes. Let's check again. Yeah. so everything got deleted from the git repository which means like the resources should also get deleted from the clusters 
Yep. So it's not terminating state, which means it will get terminated soon. Uh, let's check cluster one. Yep. So everything got deleted in this cluster. Let's again check uh, cluster two. Yep. So yeah. So all the resources got deleted. Uh, so this was our short demo on MCO with GitOps. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Thank you.